good afternoon everyone today let us discuss on the topic government measures for promotion of women's rights let us start with the introduction government normally consists of legislators administrators and arbitrators according to law dictionary government is the system of polity in a state that forms the fundamental rules and principles by which a nation or state is governed or by which the individual members of a body politics are to regulate their social actions a constitution either written or unwritten by which the rights and duties of citizens and public officials are prescribed and defined as a monarchical government as a republican government etc or the machinery by which the sovereign power in a state expresses its will and exercises its functions or the framework of political institutions departments and offices by means of which the executive judicial legislative and administrative functions of the state are carried on government being one of the three majestic pillars of state is to establish justice and to promote and provide welfare to the citizens this enables the government not only to enforce laws but also make policies and programs the government works for the people and it should always have the best interests of the people at the forefront of all reforms the government of india in the post independence also took several initiatives programs and policies apart from mandating its constitutional and legal safeguards provided for the protection inter alia empowerment of women in the country such government initiatives and measures undertaken from time to time have also played major role in realizing the constitutional objectives the conditions of women in all respects especially in india has not been historically very good women did not have much rights as compared to men further women are physically weaker than men and due to this fact also they have been often exploited due to such continuous unfavorable position and treatment the status of women has become a concern issue even in the areas of 21st century realizing the fact the framers of indian constitution have also incorporated several provisions for elevating the status of women by giving them a level similar to that of men some of the relevant provision are article 14 of the constitution provides equality before law and equal protection of law to all it is the key principle to ensure social and economic equality among the individuals then article 15 clause 1 prohibits the state from discriminating on the basis of religion race sex caste or place of birth article 15 clause 3 allows the state to make special provisions for women and children which clearly elaborates and acknowledges that women need special treatment for their protection and upliftment so the constitution of india provides a number of provisions which are related to the promotion of women's right In addition the government of India has also enacted several protective legislations to uphold the constitutional mandate and to protect women against social discrimination violence and atrocities and also to prevent social evils like marriages dowry rape practices of sati etc several statutory acts have been so far passed or amended for improving the conditions of women from time to time 
some of these protective legislations are like Child Marriage Prohibition Act 1929, Hindu Marriage Act 1955, Hindu Succession Act 1956, Dowry Prohibition Act 1961, then Contract Labor Act 1970, Factories Act 1948, then we have Equal Remuneration Act 1976, Commission of Sati Prevention Act 1987, the Indecent Representation of Women Prohibition Act 1986, then Protection of Women from Domestic Violence Act 2005, Marriage Amendment Act 2001, then we have the Criminal Amendment Act 2013, etc. The status and position of women in different societies of the world are different. Almost in all the societies, for women it is discriminatory and prejudicial. Nearly all human societies in different parts of the world are male dominated and India is not an exception to it where males are the active part and the females are only the passive part of the society. In some societies they are only contractable, saleable and endowed with the duty to serve males and elder females having no material and world, world rights. In theory they are respectable but in practice they happen to be the subjects of cruelty, ill treatment and all sorts of misbehavior of males. So to prevent such ill treatment and cruel practices against women, the constitutional as well as the statutory provisions in India not only recognize and guarantee equality to women but also empower the state to adopt measures for positive discrimination in favor of women. Within this framework, both the union and state governments aim at women's advancement in different spheres through different developmental policies, plans, and programs. To begin with, from the fifth five-year plan 1974 to 1978 onwards, there has been a marked shift in the approach to women's issues from welfare to development. In recent years, the empowerment of women has been recognized as the central issue in determining the status of women. The National Commission for Women was set up by an Act of Parliament in 1990 to safeguard the rights and legal entitlements of women. The 73rd and 74th Amendments 1993 to the Constitution of India have provided for reservation of seats in the local bodies of panchayats and municipalities for women, laying a strong foundation for their participation in decision-making process at all local levels. The Government of India had used the new millennium by declaring the year 2001 as the Women's Empowerment Year to focus on a vision where women are equal partners like men. The objective of the government policy in India has been to bring about development, advancement and empowerment of women in the country through active participation of all the stakeholders. The government has attempted to create an environment through positive political, economic and social policies for complete development of women. Government policy adopted within the legal framework is basically to promote women's participation in political, social and economic life and to allow them to access to health, education, career and vocational guidance employment, occupational health and safety, social security and public office, etc. The underlining objectives are also to strengthen legal system aimed at elimination of all forms of discrimination against women and to change the social attitudes and community practices.
in the first five year plan, the issue to provide equal status to women in India was focused. In fact, the first four five year plans were focused on organizing various welfare activities for women by giving priority to women's education. Special measures were taken by the government to eliminate discrimination, universalize education, eradicate illiteracy, increase enrollment and retention rates of girls, and improve the quality of education and technical skills of women in India. The fifth and the sixth plans witness a safe approach from welfare to entire development of women in India. The seventh plan led stress on efforts to identify and promote beneficiary-oriented programs with the intention of extending direct benefits to women in India. The eighth plan made a significant shift from development to women empowerment. It recommended 30% reservation for women at all levels of the government. The ninth plan ensured that a minimum of 30% benefits of funds flow to women from ministries and departments of the government. Certain special initiatives are being taken up by the government of India for building confidence and self-dependency of women. Some of them include like the National Commission for Women, then we have National Policy for Women Empowerment, then there is Shwem Siddha Scheme, then we have Integrated Child Development Service, ICDS, then like National Literacy Mission Program, Rashtriya Mahila Course, then Shwarna Jayanti Gram Sarozgar Yojana, Shwarna Jayanti Sekhari Rozgar Yojana. We have Rajiv Gandhi National Scheme, Rajiv Gandhi Scheme for Empowerment of Adolescent Girls. Then we have Schemes for Working Women's Hostel. Then Prime Minister's Rozgar Yojana. Minister's Employment Generation Program for Women, then we have Indira Gandhi National Widow Pension Schemes, etc. Besides all these above schemes, the governments across the world as well as various developmental organizations are actively undertaking promotion of women entrepreneurs through various schemes, incentives and promotional measures. Women's entrepreneurship can make particularly strong contribution to the economic well-being of the family and communities, poverty reduction and women's empowerment, thus contributing to the Millennium Development Goals. Women entrepreneurs in the southern states and Maharashtra account for over 50% of all women-led small-scale industrial units in India. In India, the micro, small and medium enterprises development organizations, various state small industries development corporations, the national banks and even the NGOs are conducting various programs including entrepreneurship development programs, EDP, to cater to the needs of potential women entrepreneurs who may not have adequate educational background and skills. Various women's cells are open to provide coordination and assistance to women entrepreneurs facing specific problems. Despite all such constitutional and legal safeguards and the government measures, the women in India continue to suffer due to various factors. Some of these factors may be due to lack of awareness of their rights, illiteracy and oppressive practices and customs. 
there still exists a wide gap between the goals enunciated in the constitution, legislation, policies, plans, programs, and related mechanisms on the one hand, and the situational reality of the status of women in India on the other. Government have failed to make adequate efforts. As a result, inequalities between men and women are still common and much remain to be unresolved. Governments are obliged to take essential measures to ensure the rights of all to be free from discrimination. They must repeal discriminatory legislations which facilitate human rights abuses and virtually deny equal access to justice. They also need to initiate for enacting appropriate protective legislations in matching with the global standard. Now let us conclude with these few lines. Women plays an important role in national growth and economic development from working at grassroots levels to participating in decision making. They participate and contribute in every spheres of life, either in politics, business, education, art and culture, etc. It is said that women are the key to economic development. So, they are entitled for survival to a life with dignity, grace and equal opportunities so that they can grow and explore their full potentials. It is the government to take up proper initiatives, programs and policies apart from its constitutional and legal obligations to the rights of women's safeguard for the empowerment of women in the country. The development of women has always been the central focus of planning since independence. However, there is a need to remove the obstacles on the part of women's emancipation, both from government and women themselves. Efforts should be directed towards all-round development of each and every woman by giving them their due share. Thank you all. Thank you.